Taking all these factors into consideration, we would recommend the policy offered by the Metropolitan and General as the one most suitable to your purpose. On receipt of your instructions. We will be glad to arrange the necessary formalities on your behalf. Sincerely, he's an old client. Why don't you write the letters and I'll do the filing? Yours sincerely. Yes, sir. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Mr. Figgis says, can you take him up to general fire and accident correspondence? We could do with a general fire and accident around here. Might brighten the place up a bit. He won't last here, I can tell you that. You'd think with all the unemployment, he'd show a little more interest and manners. He doesn't have to work, oh no. But probably like a lot of rich families, they keep him short to make him work. Not that he's got much family left, poor thing. <laughs> Especially. Oh, well, that's what I always used to say to your uncle when he got back from the office. Perhaps uncle had good news when he got back. All that lovely cash he'd made between nine and five. Nine and five? Your uncle was in his office by half past eight every morning and often not home till the early hours. Just you remember, Roger. That's why I'm able to give you this. Seen as our, uh, seen as <clears throat> it was agreed that I should pay you a regular allowance until you were self-supporting, but there doesn't seem much chance of that, does there, Roger? We put you into insurance, hoping you'd learn the business and get somewhere. Yes, well, I'm sorry I haven't inherited Uncle's pioneer spirit. No, you take after your father, unfortunately. Oh, he enjoyed himself running around in a gold chain, playing at being mayor, but. There was always a streak of... Well, I can see it in you, Roger. Uncle died of a coronary at 62. I sometimes think his home life had something to do with it. You're drinking a lot, Roger. Your gin is under your chair. Oh, thank you for reminding me. You might at least have the decency to give me five minutes of your time when you come home. I am, after all, on my own here all day. I'm going out this evening. You're oh. going out rather a lot lately. Have you got a girl? No. No? That's another thing. Are you all right, Roger? What do you mean, all right? Well, any normal young man of your age would be bringing girls home by now. Make a nice change for me to have a pretty face around the house now and again. <laughs> Before we was married, your uncle was a great one with the girls. Oh, yes, uncle was great with money, great with girls. Perhaps he started from the right place. He started at the bottom? Yes, exactly. And where did you start me? We gave you everything. Yeah, everything to mess me up. Snob school where they laughed at my accent. Jobs where everyone knew I'd been taken on as a favour. Now, if I'd started like uncle, with an old truck collecting scrap... It was I'd... not scrap. It was government surplus. That's how he made his, his first, first millionaire. Million. Don't tell me again, Aunt May. I just want to have a shower, wash that office off me, change and go to a film. Oh, you never think of taking me to the pictures, do you? Your uncle and me, we used to go twice a week to the... What were they called? The soldos, the stories. Not that I'd go if you offered to take me. It's all soft porn these days, whatever that is. I'd seen that. I was just going to do it. 
Well, go on then. Go and see your soft porn. Might get you interested in girls. Oh. Give me a kiss, darling. Oh. Oh, do you remember when you was little? And you used to come into my bed for cuddles. <laughs> oh. Another kiss. No! Properly! No, I like to watch. What, the winners or the losers? Oh, winners best. Do you like gamblers? I find them boring. No, I like fun people. You look like a fun person. in my life as there are winners around this table. Oh, that's good. Thank you, Blair. Well, there's certainly one winner. £1,750. Thank you. Where are you going? I fancy blackjack. Street going at roulette. Why switch? Roulette's just luck. I enjoy an element of skill. Has he been here before? Once or twice. Who is he? No idea. Fine luck. Hit me. On 17, sir. Hit me. 21. Oh. 21. You hit a 17. Everybody stands on a 17. Everybody. I don't. Oh, having a nice evening? Afraid of taking about 3,000 off you. <laughs> we like people to enjoy themselves. What do you have? Oh, I have a light ale. Oh, come on. Celebrate. Three thousand quite a win in this place. How do you know how much I won? I'd have my eye on you. You coming in tomorrow? Yes, I think I will. Good. I'll be here. No, I didn't see you play. You haven't been to many of these dives, have you? No. Only just got hooked. Well, I'm a hostess. I see that everybody's having a good time. Oh, so now you're seeing that I'm having a good time. And aren't you? Oh, yes, I am, rather. You're shy. I like shy men. <clears throat> oh, come on. You can't still be living at home and looking after an aunt at your age. No wonder you look so gloomy. Why don't you just walk out? Oh, I did once. Ran away to sea. Got a job as a steward on a cruise ship. Oh, that was a home from home, that was. Instead of one old lady, I had 300 to look after. <laughs> oh, you'd be surprised how many would tuck a tip into my trouser pocket and give me their cabin number. Yuck. So then what did you do? You're very good at asking questions, aren't you? Or is that all part of the job, too? Can be. 
And what about you? What's your story? Oh, my dad ran the amusement arcade on the pier. I used to take the money. And what'd you take here? Do you get commission? Hey, don't bite my head off. You know, you'd be quite nice if you weren't afraid to let it show. Or do I tip you? You could tip me. I'd rather have a curry. Come in. Oh, waste of time. Did they use all the four-letter words? I forgot to count. <laughs> Roger, it's daylight. Where have you been? Look, I'm not a child. You leave me all alone in this house all night, knowing what they said about my heart. And I'm not a male nurse either. There's gratitude after all we've done for you. <laughs> Look, Auntie, I've, uh, I've been wanting to talk to you about this. Either, either we should find you a, a housekeeper or, or get you a companion. Companion? Do you think I want somebody who'll be paid to pretend to like me? No, I won't have anybody else to live in this house. Not even servants. Mrs. Webb can leave me my supper tray at seven, and I've got the place to myself. Well, myself and you, Roger. <laughs> Just me and you. And now then, my old hip, you'll just have to help me up the stairs, Poppet. Oh, give me a kiss, Roger. No, prop. to celebrate tonight. And you hit a 19. That's mad. You shouldn't gamble, you know that? You're not the type. Well, looking round here, take that as a compliment. Susie. I'm wanted. Don't go, OK? Excuse me. Any idea what he's worth? No. What do I pay you for? Cheers. Well, now, what shall we have tonight? Um, curry? Um, French? Italian? Spanish? What about the Albany? Oh, no, actually, it's too expensive. Well, I think with Auntie's influence, I might be able to get us a discount. Why? Does she own the Albany, then? She owns the block. <laughs> you must be worth quite a bit. What am I worth to you? Sorry, no more champagne. I'm broke. Have it on the house. How broke? To my neck. No, until I get my cheque at the end of the month. Why don't you have a word with Vasco? No, Maybe he could tide you over. That's a good idea. Come in, Mr. Carson. Come in, come in, come in. Take a seat. How do you know my name? <laughs> oh, Mr. Carson, I can tell you haven't been playing the tables for very long. Even in Las Vegas, inquiries have to be made. I'm sure it's the same in your business. 
Which is insurance, I believe? Yes. Yeah. But insurance is just a sideline for you, hmm? Your expectations? You have been digging around, haven't you? Mm. Because I think to myself, one day, this charming young man will be coming to me for credit. And it's much better if I make inquiries in advance. What do you use, private detectives? Yes. So do you in insurance. Mm. How much you want? Five thousand pounds. Look, I could sign a form with any backstreet dealer and get that much credit to buy a car. Sure, but a car can always be recovered. And my family's reputation couldn't be if I let you down. You understand that in this country a casino is not allowed to give credit? So this will be a personal loan from me to you, okay? Okay. We also have our forms, Mr. Carson. Insurance. I've told you. I don't want a companion. I've only asked this old girl from the office to look round. No, you can tell her to stop looking. You'll have a reason, Auntie May. You see. Do you remember Philip? What, that spotty boy you were at school with? Yes. Well, you see, he's working in Spain now, and I've, I've got some holiday owing, and he's invited me over. Oh, nice for you. And so I thought if I was to find you a companion... No, you'd... no, don't bother. I can take care of myself. Mrs Webb will leave me my tray and... Oh! There is something you can do for me, if you have the time. Yes? Well, could you get me one of those? Those little machines, what lets you change the TV program without getting up? It's my hip, you see. Yes, your hip. And my heart. And your heart. No problem. And do you know what? I get another week's holiday at Christmas. I thought we could drive down to the seaside. Oh! Now, didn't you always say that you loved Torquay? The old Imperial Hotel. I wouldn't find it the same. <laughs> What you want this time? Same again, 5,000. My luck's changing, I know it is. Look, Vasco, old chap, my, my family. My father was mayor of this town. They won't let me go under. You'll be all right. Auntie May, I've got a present for you. Games of Patience. Thought you might like a change. Learn a new one. Oh, I might. Where'd you get this? <laughs> Sitting down, ten pence. Have a try. It'll pass the time. Goodbye, Auntie May. And look after yourself. Well, there'll be nobody else to look after me. Will there? On holiday? Where? Where? Where on holiday? What a dress. Oh, you dumb idiot. You let him skip the country. You're sorry. I'm sorry. Damn near 20,000 pounds sorry.
To worry, madam. Uh, what, what do you want? We're here on legal business. What? At, 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 at three o'clock in the morning? Urgent legal business. Well, I, well uh, how did you get in? You rang the bell, no answer. The back door was on the latch. Well, I, 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 I checked all the locks. After my housekeeper had gone. Or make mistakes. Well, is something wrong? Has something happened to Roger? You could say that's why we're here. What has happened? Did you know, madam, that your nephew was a gambler? Roger? Oh, it's nonsense. He ain't got the guts. He owes £20,000 to our client. 20000 there's no doubt of it, is there, lads? No doubt at all. Open and shut case. Two witnesses besides myself. I, I feel so ashamed. Understandable. Be put right in a moment. Where's your chequebook? Well, how silly do you think I am? I won't do anything without my lawyers. You can see them tomorrow. No lawyers. That's final. Find her chequebook, Charlie. But I can't write a cheque. Not for that much. Well... All oh, my money's in trust. Nobody can touch it. I can't touch it until it goes to Roger when I... So it goes to Roger when you... Hello? Hello, who's that? I think I've got the wrong number. I'm calling long distance from Spain, and my name is Roger Carson, and I wanted to speak to my Auntie May. What? Uh, I think, sir, you should come home as soon as you can. We've got some distressing news for you. I'm afraid... Yes, of course. I'll leave at once. For... First plane. You'll understand this is a dreadful shock. Thank you. <laughs> it's worked! It's worked! The old badge is dead as a doornail! And I'm rich! <laughs> you know, the, the only way to rent a killer is to hire one who doesn't know he's being hired! Wasn't that brilliant? <laughs> What do we do? We go back, I collect my inheritance, pay Vasco in full, and happy, happy, <laughs> happy ever after! Oh, poor old Aunt May. <laughs> <laughs>